All right, so what are some other things that we might expect to find in alkanes? We already know that a basic alkane looks something like this, that being butane because it has one, two, three, four carbons. So, um, and we also know that all of these carbons are single bonded to each other. Now, what would we call it and what will we say if it's a simple carbon and hydrogen structure, but there was double or triple bonds? Well, it's actually really simple. If they have a double bond, they are called alkenes. They would look like this. For example, that right there representing the double bond. Drawn out, it would look like this. You can see that the double bond is between carbons two and three. So the way that this works is just like any of the other endings, uh, alkanes giving us a name like propane, butane, and then alkyl groups giving us a name like methyl, ethyl, propyl. Well, this works in the same way. The ending ENE -E for alkene is going to just change the name from, let's say, butane to butene. Like that. All right. So, um, but for example, if I were just to say butene, how would we know on which carbon the double bond occurs? Well, just like any other substituent, we have to be specific. So in this case, where the double bond occurs in between carbons two and three, we would say two butene, indicating that the double bond began on carbon two. So this would be two butene. If I just said something like butene, then you would expect to see this. If you don't specify, what it means is that whatever it is that you are talking about, whether it's a, an alcohol group or a, or a double bond or a methyl or ethyl group, if you don't specify which carbon it's on and there's only one of them, you assume that it is on the first carbon. So if I were just to say butene, with no specificity, we are to assume that the double bond occurs on carbon number one, in between carbon one and two. In this case, like I said, when it's in between carbons two and three, we would call it two butene. However, let's say that, um, you know, it was on carbon three and four. If this double bond was in between carbons three and four, you might think, all right, well, we can call that three butene. However, that would be incorrect because remember that IUPAC states that we are to assign the lowest number possible to the substituents that we are naming. If we call this three butene by numbering it this way, that would not be the lowest possible number you could give it. Because if you numbered the chain that way, and this became carbon one, two, three, four, that double bond would actually be occurring on carbon one. So therefore, this structure would just be plain butene. All right, so triple bonds. The ending for that one is Y and E, alkynes. And that just looks the same. You would have a triple bond like that, and it would be represented by something like that. So it works in just the same fashion as double bonds. And in this case, since it occurs on carbon two, it would be two butyne. Just like that. The double bonding also can occur, well, anywhere, but it can also occur on cyclic compounds. So let's say we had cyclohexane. And we had a double bond right there. How would we name that? Well, the last name of this molecule is cyclohexane. And since the double bond is 
occurring here, and if, if we're numbering this molecule according to what we see here, we would start, let's say here, one, and we would go around two, three, four, five, six. Also keeping in mind that we want to try and assign the lowest number possible to the substituents. So if we chose to start, say here, we would go clockwise instead of numbering it counterclockwise if we started here, just to make sure that the carbon, the double bond goes in between carbons one to two. So in this case, we just have cyclohexene. Again, there is no specificity on the number because the double bond occurs on carbon number one and the ending E and E to indicate that there is a double bond. What might happen though, if let's say we had a cycloalkane or a cycloalkene that maybe had two double bonds on it. How would we name that? And then uh, this same rule can be applied to, you know, if there's multiple double bonds, two, three, four double bonds, and the same thing for triple bonds. So let's say we had a double bond there and a double bond there. How would we name this? Well, we would basically use the same rules that we applied before with the multiple alkyl groups that I discussed in video number two. So let's go around and number these. Starting here, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So the same thing, the last name of this molecule is going to be cyclohexene because there's six points and it's a cyclic compound. All right, so the first double bond occurs on carbon one. It starts here. And the second double bond starts on carbon four, right here. If we went around the other way, we would have to say that, that one double bond started on carbon five and the other one on carbon two. Assigning the numbers five and two are larger than assigning the numbers one and four. So we are going to go with one and four. So we would write one comma four and then dash. Now, how would we indicate? We already indicated by the E and E that there is a double bond. So just how you would say, you know, if there was four methyls, you would say tetramethyl, three methyls, you would say trimethyl, two methyls, you would say dimethyl. Just in this case, if there's two double bonds, you use the prefix di, di. So, but it has to be inserted here before the E and E so that we know that we are referring to the double bond when we use the prefix di. So the name of this molecule actually becomes one comma four, because those are where they begin, dash cyclohexadiene. And so that's how you would name that. You insert the di before the E and E, indicating that there are two double bonds. Also, um, just to kind of throw that in there, another type of substituent besides double bonds that you might find, and alkyl groups that you might find on alkanes, is halides. I'm just going to draw a butane here, write halides, and I'm just going to draw a butane like that. All right, so a halide, of course, is found in the halogen group of your periodic table. That would be group seven, and it consists of fluorine, most commonly, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So that's when we talk about halogenation in organic chemistry, that's really what we're referring to. So uh, in the same way, you would just attach, let's say that's chlorine like that, you would attach it like that, and when you number it, Again, carbon one, two, three, four. And so just like you name any of these other things, the last name being butane, and the number 
upon which the substituent is, is two, two dash, and then we would just include the name of the substituent, in this case chlorine, so chloro. So this molecule would be called 2-chlorobutane. If it was fluorine, you would say 2-fluorobutane. For bromine, you would say 2-bromobutane. And for iodine, you would say 2-iodobutane. And that is simply how you name those. Thanks.